to please wait to please wait for 10 more minutes to 10 more minutes as we are expecting four participants here so we'll start in next 10 minutes please okay thank you Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nitin Saxena, and I welcome all of you to this virtual platform of KLKR, the HL Memorial Trust. I would like to give you some facts that, as per the data of the year 2022, which you received from the internet, the Indian legal professions consist of approximately 12 lakh advocates, and approximately 4 to 5 lakh law students are there across the country. But every year, approximately 70,000 law graduates join the legal profession in India. But the, here, the main point is that out of these 60, 70,000 law graduates, how many actually become good advocates? That's a question. Now, according to American Bar Association, about 36% of all the attorneys say that they are very successful, and about half of them indicate that they are successful. If we compare this ratio with Indian advocates, then this percentage is lesser than what is there as per the American Bar Association. This is because of the fact that the advocates, the fresh advocates, are not aware about the basic fundamentals of practicing that court, and no one is there to help them understand the nitty gritty of this profession. But this does not mean that the fresh advocates are not aware about the law. The main contention point is that the theory is totally different from the practical knowledge and which is like practicing at court. And hence, to resolve this problem of fresh law graduates and fresh lawyers, KNKR, the HL Memorial Trust presents foundation course on basic knowledge of court practice for final year law students and fresh law graduates. The course would contain dressing sense, client dealing, file management, court presentation, diary management, and legal performance. And the main point is that the training will be provided to you by the experienced practicing advocate. Now over to Mr. Jatin. Thank you, Nathan, sir, for the fabulous introduction. And it is the true that theory is totally different from real practicality of the court. So hello, everyone. Greeting and welcome to the India's first foundation course on basic knowledge of court practice. Nathan, sir, has already told you about the topics to be covered today. And I'm very glad to share that these topics would be delivered by experienced advocates the very first topic on dressing sense, the main core area, I would like to welcome Mr. Advocate Bhanu Kalsan to address this topic. Over to you, Mr. Bhanu. Thank you very much, Mr. Jatin, to give this opportunity to me. Hello, everyone. I hope all are good. And today we are discussing about the dressing sense of an advocate. So we all know that our profession is uh, uh, working around our dressing sense first. And dress code is a symbol of confidence, a symbol of discipline, and a symbol of our profession. The balance between maintaining court's decorum, permitting uh, freedom in individual's life is most well-defined 
in a lawyer's dress code. And uh, firstly, I would like to tell you about the dressing sense, about the uniform of an advocate. The black blazer is the one of the famous uh, thing in our profession, the black coat. And the second one is our white shirt, black trousers. And uh, basically this is the formal uniform which we wear in our profession. But we, uh, but, but the, some students uh, or some freshers don't know about the right way to wear the advocate's dress, advocate's uniform. So today I'm telling about the right way to wear advocate dress, advocate uniform. Okay, so firstly, <clears throat> I'm telling about why we choose the black color in our profession, okay? So uh, in the ancient time, <clears throat> uh, there are the two dark colors, the black and the purple one. The black color was chosen because of two reasons. Firstly, colors and dyes were not readily available back then. And the purple, which is we uh, didn't choose just because purple signifies the reality. Uh, <clears throat> that's why we didn't choose the purple one. Black color <clears throat> is chosen for the legal fraternity just because the black uh, color, uh, the black color is signifies the authority and the power. <clears throat> the black represent submission on ourselves just like priests wear black to show their submission to god and uh, as the lawyer wear black to show their submission to justice and that's the main reason we choose the black okay and the uh, next we'll move further uh, for the white shirt is there anyone who is interested to tell me about the why we choose the white shirt why we choose the white color is there anyone Anybody? Because it stands for purity. Okay. Let's try. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. I'll tell you why we choose the white color in our profession, a white color in our shirt, in our uniform. Okay. The color white signifies light, goodness, innocence and purity as a legal system is the only hope of justice for a common man the color white is chosen to represent him as the indian legal system is influenced by the british rulers due to their origin the advocates act of 1961 makes it mandatory for a lawyer to wear a black robe a black coat with a white neckband and the white shirt as well. Okay, so though <clears throat> though the white is mandatory in our profession, just cause of goodness, innocence, and purity, and the white color is a sign of <clears throat> peace as well. Okay, and then we move further. The neckband, neckband is uh, play a very important role uh, <clears throat> in our profession, in our uniform, in our legal fraternity. Is there anyone who is uh, uh, interested to tell us about the neck band? Is there anyone? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, I'll tell you. The neck band. The white neck band to have their origin rooted in England. In the old English courts, the barristers at law used to wear white band as part of their uniform. I think all are aware about the neck band, advocate's band. Okay. Uh, the two piece of white cloth joined together to form the advocate's band represent the tablet of laws. There are, uh, there are two piece of cloths and uh, in the ancient time it is uh, it's called the capsule of law and the capsule of justice it's look like and in the v shape there is a, a capsule of law and the capsule of justice <clears throat> does the white advocate's band represent the uphold of law of court and law of land 
there is the law of flow and that there is law of land okay then <clears throat> we come to the uh, we come to the regulations of power council of india <clears throat> in the section 49 of the above rule governed in the trust court for the advocates appearing in the supreme court high court subordinate courts tribunals or authorities they shall the following is part of their dressing which shall be sober and dignified and firstly i would like to tell you an advocate have to uh, have to look in the decent decent manner have to look uh, a formal have to look in a formal uniform in the courtroom it will give a different aura around around him or her and uh, further we are moving uh, indian advocates dressing system <clears throat> so firstly i would like to uh, telling about the coat the blazer which all know it's a most important part in our profession most important part in our uniform okay a black button up coat which is we all know about uh, the law students advocates who wear the black coat uh, the coats in the colleges as well and <clears throat> there are the other provisions apart from the coat a chapkan achkan achkan is like uh, something like blazer but th this is not not proper blazer it's, it's very long long uh, funny looking tie okay move further the achkan then the chapkan and the black sherwani and the white band with advocates gown and the gown advocates gown is the most important thing which is <clears throat> mandatory in the supreme courts and the high courts but on the other scenario uh, <clears throat> uh, but on the other scenario the the supreme courts and the high courts give uh, give some freedom which is uh, which is in summer weather basically uh, they give they give Ram audible, Mr. Jatin. Yes, Bhavan, you are audible. Hello. Yes, Bhavan, you are audible. I'm 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 audible, Mr. Jatin. Yes, Bhavan, you are audible. Hello. Yes, Bhavan, you are yeah, audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please, please. Okay, we are discussing about the court. <clears throat> uh, I think I will discuss about the court, and the further we are moving, there is a black tie provision. provided further that in courts other than the supreme court high court district court session court or city civil court a black tie may be worn instead of pants and mostly we we saw in our courts the black tie mostly weared by the interns and uh, in, the, in the in the state courts as well uh, the advocates wear the tie as well and on the other hand uh, there is the other provisions for the trouser we are wearing black trouser uh, and the black trouser with the gray lining and the gray pants and the white pants the uh, the the combination is provided by our indian advocates act okay now we are moving further <clears throat> the lady advocates what the lady advocates video. able to wear in the court the legal fraternity the legal yeah please hello is anybody want to say something there is a tasneem of afrosh you are want to say something okay we are moving up on the lady advocate dress up uniformity in the lady advocate dress okay lady advocates may wear either the dress prescribed by in rule b of the following black full sleeve jacket or blouse white collar stiff or soft with white pants and advocates gown <coughs> white blouse with or without collar with white pants and with a black open breast coat but sometimes we are looking uh, there uh, there are the several of advocates there are several of fresher advocate uh, and the law interns who 
don't follow the dress code they are wearing a fancy <clears throat> dress up like uh, the western culture basically they are not follow the uniformity the formality of a dress code so you have to be follow the dress code first because uh, the courtroom is not a fair not a fashion so something that and you have to follow the dress code okay then uh, further we are talking about the uh, lady advocates uniform and they uh, they can wear a sari or long skirt in the court because uh, we have the provision a sari or long skirt white or black or any mellow or stuffed color without any print or design and flare black <clears throat> or stripped or gray or the punjabi dress churidar kurta as we know we are indians okay or the salwar kurta with or without dupatta or a traditional dress with black coat and bands and <clears throat> the band the advocates band which is most uh, which is uh, which play the most important role in the lady advocates uniform in the gents advocate uniform because this is the main thing which makes you an advocate okay you you can see this this is the capsule of justice and capsule of law there are the two strips more further and uh, we have a provision of advocates gown wearing of advocate gown shall be optional except when appearing in supreme court or high court except in supreme court and high court during summer wearing black coat is not mandatory these amendments have been approved by the honorable chief justice of india white letter dated 12 november 2008 subject to the incorporation of except in supreme court and high court during summer wear <clears throat> a black coat is not mandatory which is now added as rule for of the bar council rules this based on representation based on a group of lawyer from tamil nadu <clears throat> okay now we are discussing about dress code in a public domain by an advocate an advocate should not wear pants and gowns in public place other than in court except on such ceremonial occasions and at such places at the bar council of india or as the court may prescribe i think um i'm telling all about the advocate stress advocate uniform and we are already have many of the topics and and we have the shortage of time that's why i i would like to uh, stop here and thank you very much mr chatin to give me this opportunity to tell to telling about the dress code to our members and thank you very much thank you thank you advocate manu for giving the amazing introduction about dressing sense now i'll like to invite rakhi ma'am for session on client dealing ma'am am i audible yes yes you are audible audible just i'm trying to share the screen Ma'am, your video is turned off. No, I'm I'm trying to share the screen. Just hold down. hello everyone just give me 2 minutes i'm trying to share the screen on the, the topic of client dealing uh 
Uh, can someone check? Uh, I'm unable to share the screen. Jati, can you please check? Okay. Please try now. So, is it visible? Yes, yes, ma'am. It is visible now. Okay. So, first of all, I would like to tell you some points how to deal with the client when you are a, a fresh lawyer. So, there are seven steps, basic seven steps, which you are, have to keep it in your mind. First of all, it is be present. When you are dealing with your client, you will have to be present there, not only physically, but also mentally. Sometimes we have seen that uh, uh, advocates are discussing with their clients, but they are uh, not present there mentally. They are thinking someone else. So the first thing is that you will have to be present there mentally. Second thing, you will have to ask more and more from your clients. Sometimes the clients are used to be shy and they are not used to uh, know what is to tell to the advocate, what is not to tell. So they are used to talk relevant, irrelevant. You will have to ask as per your case fact. You will have to query if they are missing, if your client is missing on some points, you will have to make a query. Next point is that an advocate should be a good listener. Many times we are used to think about he is saying something, he is continuously uh, telling us anything, blah, blah, blah. So don't be impatient. Listen carefully because even a single point told by your client can be utilized during your case presentation in the court. So listen carefully. Next point is understand. You will have to understand the mind of your client, what he wants to say, what he wants to convey to you and what he wants to get. What he wants to get means what kind of relief he wants to get from the court and for what purpose he has come to you. So there are four points which I have told till yet. Be present, ask, listen, understand and next is speak up you will have to speak up if your client is continuously talking irrelevant you will have to speak up that this is not relevant to your case so you can speak up or you can skip it from your case but listen to him and be polite so that your client should not think that my lawyer is not listening to me Next is take action. Sometimes many clients are used to come with the hue and cry and say, mm -hmm. I want immediate effect. Uh, so in that case, we should not be adamant. No, this is not the way you have come today. It will take time. Many of the lawyers are used to do. You have to be polite. You will have to tell him, okay, you want it so early and see the gravity of the case if you think not as a lawyer but as a client if you think the gravity is too much and the client needs immediate action then take it as urgent and take the matter on urgency and file it means you will have to take action with immediate effect next is always encourage Sometimes we have found that uh, uh, whenever client come to the lawyer, lawyer is used to say, no, no, this is not your case. Court will not give you the relief. Uh, sometimes many kind of, uh, 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 you can say discouraging uh, uh, wording advocates are used to say, but we have not to use such kind of derogatory or discouraging words to the client because client has come to you to get the relief. And if we will not encourage them, then they will lose the uh, lose everything. Means if he will lose from his mind, then he will not contest the case properly. Now, 
you will have to be polite very polite when you are dealing with your client don't be aggressive don't be adamant many times we have seen a client is repeating same points one point he is stating after two minutes again he is discussing the same point so don't be aggressive be polite be patient listen to him carefully next is privacy privacy your client has come to you and if he says that i want to talk to you in privacy so take him to privacy not only this he has shared with you many points like in a family law cases so keep his fact as private many times i have seen in court if your client has changed the lawyer and clients are used to be in their mind that uh, my advocate will uh, uh, leak out my information so don't do such kind of things it will be against the ethics privacy is the main contention main thing basically main thing between you and your client everything be confidential everything means the things the facts your client has told to you it should be confidential and if he seeks privacy it should be in privacy next you must note down the case facts because many times when we are used to listen the facts of the client some of the facts are used to be skipped from our mind so it will be better to note down the case facts it will uh, it will be easy to present the case or prepare the case to draft the case each and every fact should not be skipped next don't be available every time over call generally we are used to see client are used to make call and call and call and 2 to 3 hours regularly discussing either this way or that way okay that's okay if your client is making you call you can attend the call but for a limited time not for a long time don't make available yourself every time because time is valuable for a lawyer and we are charging fee for sharing for giving our time to our clients so these were the main points of client dealing which a lawyer should take care while we are dealing with our clients so what will be our next topic next topic is file management generally we have seen many of the lawyer used to take a uh, uh, papers in hand case files in hand not a file you can say pleadings in hands so i would like to suggest to you that you will have to make a file file can be of any kind of quality it may be envelope it may be a folder it may be a simple file so that the documents of your clients could be uh, collected in a packet as well so pr first of all prepare a file any legal file envelope file cover can be used for there then documents be kept pleading wise whenever we are used to arrange the documents those should be kept in our file as pleading wise or date wise like uh, first plaint then written statement thereafter rejoinder or replication like this or date wise like on 1st of february you had filed the plaint second or third of february uh, you had again filed any application keep as on date wise like this you can punch your file thereafter it should be tagged properly mere keeping the documents as file is not sufficient because when you will take the file to the court 
or shift somewhere uh, one place to another place some documents can be skipped from your file and can be missed so it will be better take your file and tag it properly next is the document should be punched or bookmarked properly so that whenever you are going to quote or presenting your matter in the court that could be traced with immediate effect without any kind of hindrance many times i have seen in the court uh, court is asking about some documents and the advocate is searching by uh, pampering the uh, pages or and i am unable to uh, search the document so it will be much better if you have uh, flagged your document or bookmarked your document. Day-to-day -day proceedings should be notified in file. How you will notify in the file? Whatever happened in the court in your case, how you will notify it? You will have to take a plain paper. You can write it down. This, this, this and uh, proceeding has happened in the court. Now the court has passed this order. On the next date of hearing, we have to do this proceeding or we have to follow this order. You will have to write it down like an order sheet, you can say, whatever uh, generally the judges are used to. You can write it down and you can put it uh, in your file and tag it in the file with the documents. Day-to-day -day proceeding, you will have to notify. Thereafter, uh, generally we are used to file PF form, process fee form for summoning the opposite party and the uh, court staff is used to issue a slip, which generally advocate are used to miss that slip, which is mandatory to keep as a record. So receiving of that particular PF be pasted on a separate sheet to maintain the file record, your own office record. Because many times, most of the times, whenever the court is pass, uh, is used to pass the direction to issue summons, and on the next date of hearing, uh, when opposite party is not to appear, then court is used to ask, have you filed the PF? If we don't show the receiving of that particular PF process, per, uh, process fee form, then court is considered that we have not submitted the PF. So, keep the receiving of that PF on a separate sheet so that we can show it to the court. Copies of the day-to-day -day orders and proceedings also certify copy of main orders. Important orders be kept in your file to maintain the continuity of case proceedings. Whenever we are used to go to court, we don't have the case order. Last order we don't have. Court is asking uh, what was the last order? Have you followed the direction? If we are having the copy of order, it may be a photocopy, it may be a certified copy. So we can check it and we can mention the same before the honorable court. It will be easy for the court as well. And main thing is that we will be aware about our day-to-day -day proceeding of that particular case. So I'm repeating again. Any legal file and voila, file cover can be used. Documents be kept pleading wise or date wise and the same should be punched and tagged properly. Documents in file be flagged or bookmarked properly to trace easily in court during proceedings. Day-to-day -day proceedings should be notified in file. Will be better if you will mention it in a white paper and keep that paper tagged with your file. Receiving of PF be pasted on a separate sheet to maintain the office record. Copies of day-to-day -day orders and proceedings, also certified copies of important orders should be in your case file to maintain the continuity of the case proceedings. So, this was our file management. We have covered three topics, dressing sense, client dealing, and file management. Next is code presentation, which is very, very important for fresh lawyers and generally nobody is used to tell them how to present yourself in the court. My contention is that when we are a new lawyer, then we must not present our case. We must present ourselves. 
if we are presenting ourselves then for sure we will definitely present our case before the honorable court easily so first step is present yourself in the court and for that be confident while presenting your case in the court you will have to confident if you are going to the court to present yourself or you can say to represent your client through his case or her case you will have to be confident now question arises how to be confident so answer is that first of all you will have to be dressed up in a proper uniform because i have personally seen until unless you are not in a proper uniform you will not be confident our uniform gives us a good confidence level to appear in the court to represent ourselves second thing is that we must have the knowledge of case facts generally fresh lawyers or uh, senior lawyers are used to give the file okay go to the court and uh, take an adjournment or take a date or go till the time i am coming most often the court is used to ask okay tell me what is the matter what is your case file what are the case facts so until unless i am not aware about the case facts i am not in the court so what will happen in the court court can scold you when you are not aware about the case fact when then why you are here you are a law graduate you must be aware about the case fact okay so best thing is that if you are going to the court even in your senior's case you must aware about the case facts next is knowledge of law related to your case under what provision you had filed the case or under what provision the case has been filed against which or in which you are appearing in the court you must know about the particular law like we are appearing in a, a negotiable instrument act so we must aware about section 138 139 142 we must have the knowledge until unless we uh, will not have the knowledge of law then upon query by the honorable court how we will reply and if we give the reply then i don't think so we will convey our uh, contention to the honorable court how i will convince to the court for the relief which i want from the court so knowledge of law related to your case is must besides that we must aware about latest case law with re uh, regard to your case the case which we are representing in the court we must aware about latest law or case law the judgment provided by the honorable high court supreme court which is similar to our case we must be aware about the same so i'm repeating again when we are presenting before the court we must be dress up in a proper uniform of an advocate knowledge of your case facts knowledge of law related to your case aware about latest case law with regard to your case these are the main point next when we are presenting ourselves before the court we must be humble we must be humble while we are mentioning our case before the court sometimes advocates are used to be aggressive in the court but my contention is that aggression doesn't mean the court will give you the relief many of the advocates are used to shout in the court they are used to raise your uh, raise their tone while arguing in the court and with with this view that court will give the relief but how the court will give relief mere shouting is not sufficient my contention is that shouting is no need there is no need to shout in the court be polite be humble and ask relief on merits of your case so next is maintain the decorum of the court sometimes 
we have uh, found in the court, uh, many of the fresh lawyers are used to raise hue and cry and uh, talking on the phone or WhatsApp chatting or laughing at uh, when the court is asking something or while pro proceedings are going on in other case. So it is not a good thing. So maintain the decorum of the court. Next is, you have to make submission of case facts before the Honorable Court during proceedings instead of creating hypothetical situation in court by mentioning irrelevant things. Many times we have seen in the court, uh, many of the lawyers are used to uh, mention many irrelevant things because their case is not, uh, uh, because they are not having, a, uh, you can say, uh, good facts because uh, before the court okay so uh, i'm interrupting in the meantime uh, i i will surely uh, give you the detail where we can search the judgment and if anyone want to raise the question we will reply on the last of uh, this session so my next point is that argue on legal points and on merits of your case, we are used to argue irrelevantly. Your Lordship, he is doing such kind of thing. Your Lordship, he is doing such kind of things. No, this is irrelevant. Relevant is what? Whatever is your case fact, that is relevant. What is law, that is relevant. To the point you will have to argue because it will be a wastage of time if you will be argue irrelevantly and court can be annoyed with the irrelevant arguments. Don't go beyond the limitations of an advocate to win the case. Advocate is having many limitations under Advocates Act. So be in the limits as per law to win the case, don't go beyond the limits. Don't be unethical. An advocate is an officer of court, not any detective agency. Some, some advocates are used to work as detective agency, but my contention is that don't be detective agency, work as an advocate. Next, we have seen in the co uh, court the real proceedings and many times we have seen uh, fresh lawyers are used to ask in movies we have seen such and such uh, scene in movies we have seen such and such scene but be aware real life is totally different from real life real life proceedings are also different from the real life proceedings whatever is happening in real life proceedings that is not not even a single point similar to real life proceedings so listen carefully whatever the court is everything during your case proceedings and uh, arguments sometimes we are used to argue uh, argue before the court continuously continuously we are arguing and court is mentioning and court is everything to us something and we are not giving any heat to the court word so it's better during argument be polite and presence of mind should be there so that if the court is everything something during the proceedings you must listen carefully and be silent at that time if you require that there is further need to argue then you can continue with the permission of the court if not then you will have to be silent so listen carefully to the court if you find that the court is commanding to your case or any point of your case stop immediately arguing otherwise the same can cause negative effect to your case this is my personal uh, experience and I'm used to do. I have found in the court, I'm arguing the matter. I have found in the court, court had understand the situation of my co uh, case, the facts of my case, the merits of my case. 
and uh, uh, before completion of my complete arguments the court is commanding to my case in my favor and still i am arguing 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 the court can annoy it. court can be annoyed because court is averring in my favor and i am well aware court is averring in my favor immediately i am used to stop okay you know ship you are favoring uh, you are giving me this order uh you are giving me the favorable order you are passing the order in favor of my client highly oblige don't go beyond if court is passing any interim order or any direction in your favor many times we have seen in the court uh lawyers are used to argue and argue and argue even they didn't bother uh, what the court is uh, saying and many times i have noticed court is passing the order in their favor but they uh, the uh, advocate is not listening to the court and court is okay your application rejected so that is not my loss that is loss of a client but loss of client is my loss my reputation loss my name loss so it will be better to tackle the court in a proper way don't show your acceleration if the court is scolding other party or his counsel on any issue oftenly we have we are used to see in the court uh, opposite party is uh, saying anything and court is uh, uh, scolding either the party or the counsel on any point so many of the fresh lawyers are used to uh, laugh like this way or uh, nodding uh, okay yes you have been scolded by the court don't do this because today if opposite party or opposite party counsel has been scolded by the uh, honorable court tomorrow you are, you also can be you also can be and on the same time when you are uh, uh, reacting like this court even can scold you why you are laughing okay so it will be better to control yourself when the opposite counsel is arguing in the court on irrelevant facts don't be aggressive oftenly we have seen we have faced in the court like a uh, opposite party counsel is a uh, arguing regularly on irrelevant points uh, sometimes we are used to be fed up and uh, uh, we are used to make up our minds okay i'll tell you before the i tell you in the court itself no we don't have we have to be polite we have to be silent but we have to reply on those points which he is saying as wrong because if we will not object that means whatever he is saying we are admitting as per law silence means admission and if silence means admission that means we are doing wrong and that silence can create wrong to the case as well so don't be aggressive keep silent but not on the topics not on the points which are against you or your case hope you are getting my points so moving to next topic it's diary management and for that i would like to call mr aman advocate aman to be online but just give me 2 minutes to share the uh, screen so over to mr aman over to mr aman
Rıçırman Arju diyor. Mr. Aman Arju diyor. Aman now try. Now try to speak. Unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for giving a big opportunity. Uh, now I'm just tell you uh, diary management. So, जो diary होती है वो एक advocate की life में एक main role role play करती है. जैसे कि हमारे पास जो regular matters आते हैं day by day हम उसको diary के अंदर maintain करते हैं जिससे हमें पता लग सके कि किस date को क्या matter लगा हुआ है. Uh, इसके अंदर हम प्रीवियस डेट केस नंबर कोर्ट नेम पार्टीज नेम एंड केस स्टेटस और नेक्स्ट ऑफ पेयरिंग लिखते हैं जिससे कि हमें आने वाले केस की प्रिपरेशन करके हम कोर्ट में पेश हो सकें काफी बार ऐसा होता है कि हम लोग कोर्ट के अंदर प्रेजेंट होते हैं और कोर्ट हमें कोई डेट बता, बताती है और हम उस दिन कोर्ट कोर्ट के अंदर प्रेजेंट नहीं होते तो हम जिस हिसाब से कह सकते हैं जिस हिसाब हम इस दिन अवेलेबल नहीं है तो हमें नेक्स्ट डेट की रिक्वायरमेंट है और जिस हिसाब हमें नेक्स्ट डेट उसी के अकॉर्डिंग ही देते हैं काफी बार हम लोग डेट्स भी भूल जाते हैं केस पर जाना तो हम कोर्ट के स्टाफ को लास्ट ऑफ डेट ऑफ हेयरिंग बताकर उनसे केस का स्टेटस बता कर सकते हैं थैंक यू मैम Everyone is getting my voice. Everyone is getting my voice. Please tell me. Yes, yes, sir. I'm getting. Yeah. Sorry, sir. So, I was telling. Uh, the main point of diary management is that, supposingly, we are missing our file, our case file, due to any reason, due to any unavoidable circumstances, we have missed our files. So. In diary, we have managed previous date, case number, name of the court, party name, case status. So we can search all the documents from the judicial file and to make it another file in case of laws. Second point is that if we are having these details and we are mentioning uh, the case status in our uh, diary management, so on the next date of hearing or prior to next date of hearing, we will be well aware that these proceedings are yet to be done. Many times, we are not used to write down what is the case status. So, on the last date of your, or last date of hearing, what the court order had done, uh, and when we are used to move to the court, court, court is used to say the matter was fixed for arguments. No, no, your lordship, it is mentioned in my diary. It is for uh, plaintiff evidence or it is for defendant evidence. You can mention it properly. And moreover, as a fresh lawyer, supposingly you are having a two, three, four, five 
10 20 files and you are having a knowledge of next date of hearing on your fingertips but in future time will not be similar in future your files will be increased there will be a bundle of files so for that purpose you will have to need diary and how to manage the diary that is the ground that is the main reason and because there will be the bundle of files so you can't remember the next date of hearing of each and every file so for that purpose you will have to maintain the diary so next is which is very very important for uh, a lawyer, legal performers. What are the legal performers? Can anybody tell me? What are the legal performers? Right now we are uh, 27 participants. Can anybody tell what are the legal performers? Please involve yourself now. Involve yourself. You are also law graduates or uh, uh, would be lawyers. Until unless you will not involve yourself, how? Uh, uh, I don't think so. What is the purpose of uh, my training? Involve yourself in the uh, training. Any single one, any single performer or name of performer, I will not ask for uh, what for what purpose it is used. Okay. So I'm sharing the screen. So, is it visible to everyone? Yes. Okay. If any of you is not uh, uh, able to see, please tell me. Yes. This is the address form. Generally, when we are used to file a case we are used to prepare a pleading or drafting or uh, then we are used to mention or attach this address form of the parties to the petition or the case which we are going to file first of all we have to mention therein the name of the court in which court this particular case is going to be filed okay now what is the case Case means if it is civil or criminal, then you will have to mention. If it is criminal, then it will be mentioned in case. And if it is civil, then it will be mentioned in suit. Then you will have to mention here A versus B, party's name. Now, thereafter, date of hearing. If date of hearing is not expected, you can leave it as blank. Then the address of plaintiff, defendant, applicant is as under. On whom we have we are presenting the court or presenting the case like petitioner, then the name of the petitioner. If defendant or applicant, so defendant name of the defendant or applicant. Thereafter, name with father name. Again, Whatever be the name of your client, along with his father name, you will have to mention there. Cast, generally in Delhi, it is not been asked. We can leave it blank. Resident of, so we have to mention his address, post office, tehsil, district, and remarks. Remarks means for what purpose this uh, performer has been filled or what is the purpose of this case. Okay. Now, next performer is
Is it visible to form CA1? Okay, if yes, you are not uh, uh, telling me, then you can give me the thumb. thumb. Okay. You can give me the thumb if, you, if it is visible to you. So this is a form CA. CA means certified, which, which we are used to uh, submit as a certified copy. When we are used to get the certified copy of any pleading or an, any order from the Honorable Court, we have to fill this kind of particular form. It may uh, differ state to state, but uh, generally in Delhi, this kind of form is to be used. So to the district officer, which district officer? Copying agency. Name of the applic name of the application, home file or applicant. In applicant, uh, you can file your name. There is no need of wife of daughter of son of. You can file your uh, you can write down your name along with your enrollment number. Resident of you can mention the address of your chamber. And uh, description of the number of the case, from the record of which the copy is requ required. So here you can mention the name of the court. P.S. Goshwara number is basically when the case is uh, used to be decided and file is punched or kept to be the record room, a particular number is used to be given to those files which have been decided. That is called Goshwara number. If your case file has been decided, then you will have to mention the Goshwara number. Otherwise, you will have to mention the cases pending before the court of so-and-so and next date of hearing is so-and-so. You will have to fill this kind of performer like district, name of the parties, nature of the case, what kind of case it is, date of decision. So here you can mention case is pending and next date of hearing so and so. Name of the court, deciding the case or where pending. Here you can mention the name of the court. Now these columns are for the documents for which we are applying the certified copy date of order, whatever, it may be single order, it may be multiple order. So you can mention the dates of order here. Then name of description of the papers of which copy is required. So accordingly, date wise, like 1st of February, this document, 3rd of February, this document, you can mention here. Now it is asking purpose for which copy is required, whether it is required for private use, or filing in some court, etc. You can write it for office record, for self-use. No need to mention for private use or uh, you want to file it uh, in other some court. No need. That's okay if you will mention for office record. So we will move to this column. Court fee stamp filed with the application. Here in Delhi, if we are filing a certified copy application, then we are used to file rupees two stamp duty if the case is pending. If the case is pending, we are used to submit or paste rupees two stamp. If the case has been decided, then it will be rupees five. Okay. So if rupees two for single, uh, single order certified copy, now it is asking for number. If we are having multiple copies, we are having a uh, application for uh, multiple order sheets. So three, four, five, six, whatever be, you can write it down and multiply with the applicable stamp duty. If is if the case is pending, rupees two multiply by six. If the case is decided, uh, rupees five multiply by six. Total value you can mention here. Uh, I copy to be sent by post. No. Or will applicant attend it in person? Yes, in person. Because many times we have seen if we tick the copy sent by post, it is used to be lost. Here you will have to put your signature. One more thing which is very important. If you are working as associates, so put your signature along with your other associates so that in case of receiving in person, you are not available on your behalf, your associate can take it. Mention here the date of 
filing again same thing this is to be left because this is not to be required or this is not required to be filled by us so sign here and here it is mandatory important thing is that which column you have to tick if it is not required as too much urgent you will have you will have to tick ordinary it will take a uh, uh, i think 10 rupees per paper and if you want as urgent it will uh, it will charge high amount but within 4 to 5 days in ordinary it will take 15 to 20 days in urgent it will take 3 to 4 or 4 to 5 days but will will be charge amount will be charged high okay so two points i have covered in legal performers one is address form and other one is ca form next is checklist there are two kinds of checklist one is to uh, one is used to be used in uh, ni act and one is in normal uh, cases other than ni act so checklist this is the document which is again used to be submit along with the case file when we are used to file the same at initial stage valuation of suit jurisdiction it will be uh, uh, sorry jurisdiction point like which police station or which area where that particular party or your client is used to reside or where the cause of action has taken place we will have to mention there name and address of the advocate you will have to mention your name address along with your mail id your phone number plus your enrollment number nature of suit what kind of suit is it is because this is generally used in a civil then you will have to mention the provision under what provision you are going to file the case, it is to be mentioned here. Now, age of parties. What is the age of your party? You will have to mention here. And what is the age of opposite party, defendant? You will have to mention here if you are aware about. If you are not aware about, then you can mention not aware about. Caveat. If any kind of caveat you have filed or you are having knowledge, that opposite party has filed, you will have to mention herein, otherwise not applicable. If you are not aware, you can mention therein, we are not aware whether any kind of caveat is pending or not. But if you are aware, you will have to uh, mention therein. Whether any earmark code means any other matter or any other similar kind of matter is pending before any court you have to mention here because it is our duty to inform the court if the similar kind of matter or under similar provision we have already filed or is pending it is our duty because if we will if we will not mention then it would be called as concealment of facts so we will have to mention therein but if similar facts, similar proceedings, similar provisions are pending, then it would be counted as res judicata. Hope you are well aware about res judicata. Next is a court fee affixed. So, as per valuation of our case. We have to mention here in which amount court fee we have affixed in the petition. So, if it is a single uh, court fees, then we will have to mention thereby as a gross total amount. If there are multiple court fees, so sort uh, relief sort. What is the relief? And applicable if there is a uh, court fees applicable, then we have to mention therein. Valuation of relief for the purpose of jurisdiction. If there is requirement of a court fees, then in this column we have to mention. Generally, we are used to uh, write down by this way in gross area that uh, this is the total court fees. Next is 
connected cases if any and name of the court where the uh, where pending if both the parties are having other case pending before any court of law whether it may be 1 2 3 4 any kind of number we will have to mention there there and if we are in need of a extra sheet we can attach the extra sheet in support of this para next is checklist in 138 so it is almost similar but not exactly same date of the case whether 138 ni act complaint case etc details of the case means what was the check how uh, what was the check number uh, amounting rupees uh, was drawn from the from was drawn from which bank here you can fill the amount of the check where the that particular check got bounced means area in which area it got got bounced name of the complainant means who is the victim who is the sufferer or address of the complainant likewise if there are more than one complainant you can enhance column number 5 5a 5b 5c like that name of the police station the area where the check got bounced the police station will be that particular police station will be mentioned here any other information with respect to present case supposingly uh, our check has been uh, uh, given to uh, the check has been given to our client with regard to any kind of contract or any agreement or uh, uh, like a uh, any business deal so we can mention those part about those particular documents here in this column it will be much easy for the court to track the case what is the actual case what are what are the actual facts of the case next is very very important form number 45 which is called bail bond bail bond are not generally used to be teach or understand by anyone in the court so i am telling you this is a form number 45 that is called bond and bail bond for attendance before officer in charge of police station of court or court so here here bail bond basically is a surety bond to be signed or executed by any kind of surety and it can be used as personal bonds can anybody tell me uh, who is aware about form number 45 form what is form number 45 everyone is silent okay let me tell you form number 45 is a bail bond you can use it as a personal bond as well as surety bond so we will move to surety bond first here you will have to mention the name of the court where the case is pending or Uh, which court has passed the bail order here you will have to mention the name of police station and uh, section under which the fir has been registered number fir number if any kind of next date of hearing you will have to mention there and sent to j on means on which date the accused was sent to j if it is not applicable because in 138 there is no provision of uh, of accused to send on jail at the initial stage so if it is not applicable you can mention it as a not applicable so first column is for accused this is the column this column is 
used to be filled for the accused. I, name of the accused, son of, father name, address, then having been arrested or detained without warrant by an officer in charge of, here we have to mention the name of police station. Police station for having been brought before the honorable court, charged with the offense of. Here we will have to mention the offenses, means under which section he has been booked under. And here we will have to mention the surety amount, which is which has been ordered by the court. Here we will have to mention the date and signature of the accused. This particular para is for accused. Now come up to this para is for surety. I, name of surety, son of so and so, resident of so and so, hereby declared myself for the above said Shri. Shri, above said Shri means the name of the accused. Surety will mention the name of the accused. That he shall attend the officer in charge of name of police station or the court of Shri, name of the court. And again, here the surety amount will be uh, mentioned. Date when the surety is going to be submitted before the court and signature of the surety. Generally, two witnesses are required for the same, but as of now, advocate is used to put her uh, his signatures as witness. Now, this is the back side of the form number 45. This is affidavit, which is to be submitted by surety, not, for, not by the accused. This is submitted by the surety. I, so-and-so, son of so-and-so, age about so-and-so, resident of so-and-so, do hereby solemnly affirm and declare as under. Now, he will say that the deponent is the resident. Who is the deponent? Deponent who is deposing this affidavit means the surety. The deponent is the residence of the above said address having his or her, her ration card number. Now it is replaced by Aadhaar card and election card. You can replace it by either DL or uh, you can say passport and PAN card. Here, the accused is dash of deponent. Here, uh, the surety will have to mention his relation with the accused. Like, accused is the brother of deponent or uh, father of the deponent, son of the deponent, whatever be the relation, the surety will have to mention here. Okay. If the surety is a salary, uh, salaried, salaried person, then he will have to mention the deponent is working as. What is his designation? He can mention here at the name of the company or wherever he is working. TC number or salary slip number he can mens uh, mention there. Earns rupees. How much earning per month he is? He can mention there. Only on this point he can be the surety. Or, not and, or the deponent is the owner of household articles valued about rupees. Here he can mention the value of his how to household articles or the deponent is the owner of immovable property bearing number like if he is having any shop any uh, house uh, whatever kind of he can mention there and he can mention the value of that particular property next uh, next seven six we will take later on seven if the surety is having FDR of the amount which the honorable court had suggested to fill in surety bond. He can mention, I have an FDR bearing number so and so issued by bank or uh, post office, whatever, by, by, by so and so and for rupees so and so. Or I own a vehicle like a uh, if we are used to give a, uh, we are the owner of any kind of vehicle, scooty, car, truck, whatever, we are we are used to submit the surety, uh, we are used to submit the RC of that particular vehicle. So we have to mention the detail of that particular vehicle that 
I own a vehicle number so and so make of so and so what is RC number we have to mention there and at present what is the value of uh, and at present value is not less than main point is that if we are giving value of FDR uh, vehicle salary uh, immovable property so value of uh, the surety should not be less than the amount mentioned by the code. It can be higher, but it cannot be lower. Last, the deponent means surety undertakes to produce the accused before the honorable court on every date of hearing. This is the purpose of the surety to arrange the surety or to submit the surety bond in the court that accused will be present on each and every date of hearing this is my surety for that purpose surety bonds are used to be submitted before the court now here the surety will uh, put his signatures or thumb impression now this is the verification clause again the uh, uh, sorry surety will uh, put his signatures but main point which is to be keep in mind before going to this point the deponent is the owner of household property or for immovable property means column number four to five. If you are going either of these, court will not release the accused with immediate effect or on the same day. Court will send the IO of the case to this particular property where these household articles are kept or to verify the immovable property whether it is in your name or not. It can take time to submit the report and when the report will be submitted before the court, it can take two, two days, three days, four days and if it is beyond uh, the limits of uh, uh, state or it is out of state, then it can take 15 to 20 days. So I would uh, like to suggest to you rather than going to column number four and five, you must prefer column number three, uh, seven and eight. It will be much better to release your person, uh, the accused with immediate effect. So going to next point. This is the index form. And this is the list of documents. So Earlier, we were used to make it in two, uh, two documents, like index form and list of documents. Nowadays, we are used to mix do, uh, both the two performers. Like, if we are going to file any case, this is the very first page before, the, before our petition or plaint. Okay. So, here we are mentioning the name of the petitioner. Here we are uh, mentioning the name of the respondent. Then serial number one, particulars for which part, uh, which particulars we are discussing. Particulars of the petition which we are going to file. Like uh, if we are going to file a complaint under section 138. So here we can mention complaint under section 138, read with section 142 under NIA along with its sporting affidavit. How much amount court fees we are we have pasted therein, we have to mention here. And total number of pages, page number one to last. Because we are including the affidavit, so we have to count page number one to last page number uh, of affidavit. Thereafter, if we are filing any Interim application like 143A uh, or uh, any kind of uh, speedy, speedy disposal. So we can mention here simultaneously court fees pages. Thereafter, list of documents which we were used to submit earlier therein. Now we are used to attach in that particular performa index form only. Here we can mention an ex an excerpt PW1 over A, name of the document, court fees will not be pasted thereon, 
and that particular annexer or that particular document, how many pages it is having, we can mention therein. Likewise, we have to complete our index. Date should be filled therein. Advocate must put his signature here on. Next is inspection form. When we are used to inspect the judicial file, we are used to file, uh, used to submit this particular kind of application to inspect the judicial file. We have to mention the name of the court, case detail, name of the parties, case number or FIR number, and what is the next date of hearing. So this is the set performer wherein we can mention that the above set matter is pending for adjudication or pending for trial and determination before the honorable court and next date of hearing is whatever is the date of hearing we will have to mention here that the counsel for the if i am the counsel for plaintiff if i am the counsel for petitioner if i am the counsel for accused whatever we we have to mention here wants to inspect the court file and documents it is therefore most respectfully prayed that this honorable court may be pleased to allow the counsel for the whatever be the party to inspect the court file. Here you will have to put the signatures and rupees 5 in Delhi, rupees 5 stamp duty we will have to put on it and submit in the court. Court will allow this application and you will be allowed to inspect the judicial file. Next is Memorandum of Appearance. Before moving to Memorandum of Appearance, I will introduce you about Vakalatnama. Basically, what is Vakalatnama? Vakalatnama is a document through which your client authorizes you to appear on his behalf in the court. So, before the Honorable Court of Name of the Court, we have to mention. Here we have to uh, mention the name of the parties. Here, know all to whom these present shall come. I, if we are for petitioner, then we have to mention the name of the petitioner. If we are for the respondent, then we have to mention the name of the respondent. This is our uh, setup of uh, my association, but you can write down your name here your detail, your uh, office address, chamber address, your phone number, your enrollment number, your mail ID, etc. And here you can put your signatures. Your client put his signature. If there are more than one clients, means two clients can one here and one here put their signatures respectively. So this is a Vakalat Nama. But if some uh, sometimes what happened, you got a call from your client that I have got someone right now and I'm unable to come to you. So you will have to appear on my behalf in the court. But until unless we don't have the Vakalat Nama, how we will appear? How court will listen, listen to me? So this is the document which is called Memorandum of Appearance. Wherein for the date fixed, for a single date, we can submit this document so that our client should not be remained unattended in the court or his case should not be unattended. Name of the court, name of the parties, we have to mention the undersigned is appearing on behalf of Whatever your client, if he is plaintiff, if it is a defendant and uh, he has been authorized to appear by na again name of the uh, defendant or uh, whatever be the party, date and sign stamp of the advocate. So this is a memorandum of appearance in case if you don't have the signed vakalat nama of your client. Before moving ahead, I have, when I have discussed about form number 45 bail bond, I had discussed for surety, not for personal bond. I have discussed for surety bond, not for personal bond. Basically, personal bond, when 
any accused is not able to arrange for any surety, then this is the duty of the court to release the accused on personal bond. So, this is a performer of personal bond. This one only. I can show you in form number 45 only. If your client is getting released on personal bond, there is no need to fill this area. You can cross it. And uh, the affidavit column, you can cross it. Only you will have to fill this particular area, which is to be used for accused. And you will have to submit two performers for personal bond. One could be kept in the court and one could be uh, uh, sent to the concerned jail authorities to release him. Yes, one more important thing, which is to be keep in mind. Generally, we are used to submit the bail bond, the details of the accused person, whatever is provided by the family members. But no, this is a wrong thing. You will have to mention the detail as per the judicial file. Because whatever address, whatever the spelling of the name is mentioned therein, it should be mentioned there in the uh, surety bond or in a personal bond until unless you will not get the same details, he will not be released from the jail authorities. Okay. So, next point will be process fee form. Previously, I had discussed uh, in uh, file management that PF or uh, receiving of PF form should be attached in the file. So this is the PF form. This is the PF form. Okay. Now I will tell you here the name of the court, uh, court is to be mentioned. Here the detail of the case number is to be mentioned. Here you will have to mention the name of parties A versus B. Okay. Previous date of hearing, what was the previous date of hearing, means last date of hearing and what is the next date of hearing. Now, date of filing. Generally, in Delhi courts, we are used to get the order of uh, filing of PFRC within seven days or some courts are used to issue orders uh, file within three days, file within 15 days. So, beyond limit, we should not. We have to file the PF within limitation time. So, here we have to file, uh, mention the date of filing. Date of filing of PF. Filed by whom? Obviously, plaintiff or petitioner. Uh, purpose of filing? Notice to the defendant or accused person. Notice to the opposite party. Number. Now, this is a very important part. Number. For which number? If the accused is num uh, only one, you will have to mention number one, two, three, four, five. Whatever the number are, there you can mention. Amount of uh, process fee, 1.25, 1 rupees 25 paisa here in Delhi for per defendant, per accused person. And if we are having single, you can paste, uh, you can uh, mention here 1.25 rupees 1.25. If more than one, then you can multiply the person by 1.25. And court fee affixed, total amount court fee you will have to affix here. Okay. Next is here again, you will have to mention the name of the court. Case number, suit number, in re means name of the parties, previous date of hearing, next date of hearing, again date of filing and Almad or assistant Almad means court staff will sign. And this is the piece of cutting, below piece of cutting, you will get from the court staff as receiving that you have submitted the PF before the court and you have followed the court orders. So these were the performers uh, which are generally used before the court. Hope you got every point clear.
if there is any query you can tell me okay someone is asking for uh, could you able to send all the forms yes sure can you share all the slides yes sure i can share okay if there is any query you can raise uh, these performers i'll share to over your mail ids which i have i'm having already i'll share to all of you if it will be workable to you you can uh, use it not an issue any query please so okay thank you if anyone is having any query if right now you don't have any query on later stage uh, it will be raised in your mind uh, you can uh, share your query through mail through the whatsapp number already given to you i would like to take your leave now over to jatin ji Is there anyone from KNKR? Yeah, hi. Um, so, you are not visible, sir. You are not visible. Okay, just a moment. Yeah, yeah, everyone. Hello. So it's time to no, no, no. Am I visible now on the sir, screen? Uh, no, sir. You are not visible. Through which mail ID you are there? Uh. Yes, just let me check again. Uh, I think now I'm visible. No, sir, you are not visible. Visible. Okay. You are not visible. Just, just give me a minute. Yes, you are now visible. Okay. So you are visible now. Okay, I'm visible. Everyone, now it's time to conclude this session. And I'm sure that you, that you must have, you know, uh, learned many things from today's session. And uh, to add on this, uh, we also have two more courses which will give you a deep insight on this subject. And the courses which are available are first course is basic fundamentals of legal drafting and the another course is ambient course of legal drafting and trust me this you now these courses will really help you to shine uh, yourselves in your profession as an independent advocate so uh, it's really it was really you know a very uh, i think it's a very good session with all of you who have joined us and we really want to thank you for joining us and uh, and thank you uh, rakhi ma'am for this beneficial session on this subject i'm i'm sure that everyone have everyone has learned one thing or another from your you know deeply knowledge which you have given to us in this short span of time and uh, really all the advocates advocate anu advocate aman thank you so much for your this time and giving this information this knowledge on this subject and with this as a team we are signing off and uh, for any information if you are interested in these two courses which i have let you know uh, you may contact us you may you know through on, on, the, on the whatsapp number which is there with you but i still let you know the number this is 9717188578 and really look forward to hearing from you have a good day ahead everyone goodbye Yes, one Thank thing you. I want to one thing yes, I want sure. to share. One thing I want to share. Yes, Actually, please. I think a feedback form has not been shared to the participants. So hopefully, uh, you will share the feedback form on their mail IDs or WhatsApp number. So I would like to request uh, as soon as possible you will get the feedback form link. Please uh, submit it as soon as possible. Please. Okay.
so thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you everyone thank you ma'am thank you sir